Okay, um, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is Rich Allen, and I post content uh, about floating islands on the ocean and uh, space habitats, space colonies, uh, basically any large uh, living systems that are currently fictional but possible to build and uh, able to provide uh, a bright future for humanity. So um, here's a, a short video that is just just want to kind of do an overview of you know some things that I've brainstormed. Uh, this is very low um, low effort, a very simple video. I have some really great video hardware to do these kind of like talking head videos. I mean, I've got a pretty good setup, but um, I just don't have time to do anything elaborate when it comes to editing and design work. And um, I have long hours in my job selling cars. So um, this is going to be a little bit low effort as far as YouTube's concerned, but I hope that the content uh, and the message is uh, valuable to you and many other people. So thanks for tuning in. And um, so I want to share my screen. Let's go over to... Okay... Uh, window capture. We're going to go to mm -hmm, this one. There we go. So we hone in a little bit. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so. Um, Here's some of the topics that I've thought of that uh, I'd like to discuss on my channel. And um, I'm looking for, for more ideas, but uh, so here's some of, the, some of the basics that I've already kind of outlined. Um, so the advantages and drawbacks of different types of space colonies. Um, so, you know, what's great about certain designs and what's not so great about them it's it's all about like cost and difficulty to build and w what lifestyle does it really provide for the inhabitants and um i want to do a video on that and going through all the different types of space habitats from o'neill um o'neill cylinders to uh, stanford Taurus and Maybe some other ones, but actually O'Neill Cylinders and Stanford Taurus, I think, are really the most important ones um, as far as uh, people in this generation aspiring to a future in space. You know, uh, giant mega structures that are the size of the whole solar system have been have been discussed on YouTube, but. These are not very realistic, so um, I'm going to stick with things that are something aspirational that could be inspiring to drive people's motivation in this current era. You know, something to aspire to for future generations and to teach your kids, to teach your family members. Um, so that's what's exciting, I think, about O'Neill cylinders and Stanford Tauruses. So, uh, also advantages and so another title or another topic, sorry, but that I'd like to discuss in my YouTube videos would be the advantages and drawbacks of different types of floating islands. Um, everything from single family, like a seastead small structure that's just maybe 100 yards out on the ocean to floating mega cities and multiple floating mega cities grouped together to make a floating nation even um so and everything in between all the steps that would take to start with small little single family islands 
and to eventually grow out to huge uh, floating cities. So, and I have some really great artwork. I'm looking forward to share it with you. Uh, but again, this is just a low effort. You know, after work, I'm going to record some 10 minute videos, some 10 minute clips um, to, to uh, get you acquainted with uh, all these different uh, concepts and ideas. So, um, also, uh, another topic that I could discuss is advantages and drawbacks of retrofitting an existing floating vessel or offshore uh, structure. So there's all kinds of existing um, oil, uh, uh, like ships, uh, oil rigs, um, all different kinds of floating structures and uh, solid um, in one place, like concrete structures that are like literally so huge, they go down to the sea floor and support a structure that is above the ocean, you know, surface. So, um, looking forward to discuss that. Uh, so, like, what would it take to retrofit one of these existing structures, these multi-billion dollar oil rigs or cruise ship or other structure, and turn it into a permanent uh, colony or uh, habitat for you know, offshore living for an independent community. Um, and so, uh, so the next topic that I want to bring up would be um, all the current crop generation of 3D um, space artists. We have tons of people doing, I mean, more and more people are doing 3D artwork and posting it onto YouTube. And what's really interesting is a lot of times it comes from collaborations. You, you might have one YouTuber who discusses something like SpaceX. Like, let's use What About It, the a channel called What About It. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a guy named Felix Schlang, and his channel is called What About It. And you know, just using him as, as, as an example, he'll use space artists um to illustrate some of his um ideas or what, what he's trying to to discuss on his channel and uh there's some fantastic artists some people that make um illustrations of or animations of uh, spacex rockets going up and the whole spacex factory and, and starbase down in texas and um, other space habitats and things like that. So, um, so I would like to make a video that just kind of highlights who those space artists are um, and try to give as much information as I can about them, even more like as a shout out to the artists um, and also to inspire, hopefully, other folks who want to create space artwork um, one of the most popular programs for 3d artwork is called blender and it's free like you can download it off the internet and start using it and um, while it does it could take a very powerful computer to use blender um, you don't have to start with a super powerful computer you can really get started by downloading blender onto a basic laptop and you know get getting familiar with the software and start to build things. You can do some, some, some courses online or like even like basic 10 minute tutorials and things like that to get acquainted with Blender. So um, that's how there, there's become a growing community of Blender artists. And a lot of those artists are making space artwork. And I want to uh, give a shout out by, um, highlighting those folks uh some of these some of the best uh known space artists on youtube um, but at the same time i can also highlight some of the best floating island artists there's a lot of great floating island artwork and um, a lot of those folks are currently active in the community producing floating island artwork and 
I think some of the images uh, and animations that they're creating are pretty amazing. So, um, and they can be very inspiring for folks. So I'm looking forward to create a video like that. Uh, the next topic that I came up with is, um, I mean, I, I, quite simply, I'm calling it what happens if we don't expand. So what I'm, what I mean by that is, um, in my mind, uh, humanity needs to continue expanding forever and ever. And I have a pretty detailed, elaborate thought process on why humanity simply needs to expand indefinitely or else we will eventually fail. So uh, I would like to create one video literally just to discuss why it's such a big deal, why it's so important. Um, if we, you know, if we don't continue to expand, humanity will likely die. So we're just going to continue to expand indefinitely, growing and growing. Um, and there's room for trillions of human beings um, just inside the solar system. So, um, and, and I can kind of show you how, like, based on designs that have been created and, and shared, <laughs> I'd like to convince you that um, it's possible to expand indefinitely, and it's, uh, we should expand indefinitely, and we shouldn't fear it, uh, that there's a beautiful, wonderful future that awaits us if we create it so that's the important part we got to create it so we need to get up we need to use our force of will and uh, make that future that way we want it so um so we don't end up you know uh suffering the drudgery of what uh, of, of not having you know, a, a plentiful bountiful future for generations upon generations uh, that come after us so that's uh, one of the topics would be what happens if we don't continue to expand and then another uh, topic um, companies and brands that are making floating islands happen uh, there are uh, numerous companies and organizations out there that are working to advance the future of floating islands on the ocean and um there actually there actually hasn't been an enormous amount of financial success um but i think that there is a lot of potential for financial success and uh, hopefully the maybe this channel could help inspire and um popularize uh seasteading so that um more people take an interest and um, popularize it to the point where uh, there becomes an economy where people are buying and selling uh, floating islands. And uh, I think that's an exciting future too. So what companies and brands are, are working on this? Um, I want to make a whole video dedicated just to that. And then... Um, uh, another topic I was thinking of is the history of seasteading. Um, I have to name drop the name uh, Patry Friedman because he uh, is one of the most important historical names in the realm of seasteading. Um, but there's many other names, and Patry's not even the first. Um, but uh, there's, there's so many people who have taken an interest in seasteading and um made tremendous advancement in popularizing it um and i've taken an interest since about 2010 and uh over the last 14 15 years i've seen uh, unfortunately i've seen a lot of people come and go through <laughs> through the uh, seasteading movement but um you know i want to talk about that history and um and, and give credit where credit's due. Um, so, uh, well, we are. I already said like the advantages and drawbacks of uh, and of retrofitting existing vessels. 
So in terms of topics for videos, um, one of those topics could be advantages and drawbacks of retrofitting an existing vessel. Um, but we can also talk about how to retrofit an existing oil platinum. Like what would be the process? What would be the steps involved? Like how technically, what would it take um, to actually you know, take an existing oil platform or a cruise ship and turn that into a permanent colony uh, or community out on the water? <laughs> um, so and another uh, topic would be uh, who should pay for a seastead? So that's that's actually one of the most important topics that there is because you know that's that's one of the biggest questions that comes up is like okay this is you know there's some a lot of fancy artwork uh for seasteading but um you know is it just fantasy like wh who can actually front the money because this stuff's not cheap it's very expensive so um basically i'd like to dedicate an entire video to uh, who should pay for seasteads? And um, basically, I mean, I'm going to... The short answer is rich people. <laughs> it's always been my position is that we need to convince wealthy people. And specifically, like, uh, people who are, like, recently wealthy or young and wealthy, people who got wealthy easier are more likely to see the value in a progressive technological idea um, and be willing to put money toward it versus someone who's like old money, um, set in their ways, grew up in wealth and not interested in you know technology and it's, or at least spending a lot of money <laughs> um, on it. So we need to make a compelling vision for people to spend large very very large amounts of money um uh, for seasteading ventures structures and businesses and things like that um so um I, there is some other ideas i have like there's I, I listed four other topics which are all possible fictional topics um that would take place on seasteads or in space colonies um basically love story it'll be like a love story crime story a success story a horror story i'm sure i'll come up with some more ideas um but i haven't actually created those stories so <laughs> i mean that's a that's a whole that's a whole project in itself, obviously, you know, developing characters and developing a story arc. And um, so, again, this is my this is my very low effort um, uh, series of, of videos that I want to just start out by turning on my camera after work. You know, my, my, my girlfriend works until 11 o'clock at night. I only work until seven o'clock at night right now. And, um, so I can come home, sit, you know, turn on these lights and sit in front of the camera and talk to the world about, uh, space colonies and floating islands. And this is where it all begins. So, um, uh, Please do uh, like and subscribe my video and uh, also look at my channel and see what else there is to discover. I'm hoping to produce a lot of content, but not just a lot of content. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm hoping to do, <laughs> I know this is kind of crazy, but I'm hoping to do higher and higher quality of content and longer form and, you know, like with the possibility of getting to like two hour episodes at um like full scale hollywood quality movies basically <laughs> which would take you know like huge budget hundreds of millions of dollars with you know amazing characters and actors um 
I think it would be amazing to promote floating islands and space colonies uh, with, with such a brand uh, if I was able to build that brand up. So stay tuned. Uh, keep an eye on my channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. All right. Talk to you later.